The first of what I call the big three features that big commerce hands down wins over Adobe commerce such that I would expect your migration costs will be covered because of an increase of conversion rate thanks to implementing these features. This one is a unique one though, because this is less of a feature and it is more of a foundation of how these two platforms differ. Thus, I call this open source v open SaaS. Open source v open SaaS also looked at in this type of a format. You see, while I've put this in kind of uh, funny terms, the reality is these two platforms are night and day different as far as how they've been built, and thus there are benefits and disadvantages to both of these ways. As both an Adobe partner and a big commerce partner, we're certified on both sides. We understand the difference as far as what, what, what is best for one merchant and what is best for another merchant. And I'll give you a spoiler alert. There's no cut and dried answer, unlike what you'll probably read on the internet as you are doing this research. Let's quickly break down the Adobe side versus the big commerce side. I like to use this example of Legos. As a merchant, you are probably and often wanting to leverage the value that big commerce or that Adobe commerce brings because it's open source. Open source means it's customizable. In other words, every single line of code that is executed in the Adobe commerce platform can be changed. Things can be swapped out. Modules can be installed. It's just like that. It's super easy. Well, here's what this would look like. Here's the Adobe Commerce Core, and here we have a new piece of functionality. Now, we add this new piece of functionality in here, um, but we kind of run into a bit of a problem, right? There's, If we were just to add this one piece as it is, the whole stack would fall over. So we have to add, unfortunately, a, some, a Band-Aid or maybe some technical debt. To be honest, the good agencies, like I consider Swift Otter, do a lot to mitigate this. Automated testing, uh, rigorous testing protocols, manual testing protocols, um, code reviews, uh, code style checks, uh, a lot of training, documentation, and I'm missing like five other items. We do a lot to ensure our code is high quality and fits in very well with the this, this system. Unfortunately, I see time and time again, much to the great frustration of merchants, perhaps that's why you're watching this video, is not every agency does this. In fact, there's a good number of agencies that just don't even know how to do this, which creates problems. Now, you might not notice this right now, but wait six months to a year when you need to upgrade this. Now, what you can't really see too well here is there is a new level that has been added to this stack of Legos here, but nothing has been done to compensate right here. Now, before this was the case, if you would have just, and before we've added this, this brick as well as this brick, uh, the whole stack would have fallen over by adding this new piece of functionality. Well, that's why this piece of technical debt was added kind of as a Band-Aid. Well, now that a new brick more weight has been added to this side, thanks to the upgrade, some value added there, unfortunately, somehow this extra piece of new customization was also missed. And we have a shaky environment. Now, while it might hold up for this initial release, give it six months or three months or a some type of problem, a catastrophe to the hosting environment, something, this whole thing is likely to fall out. We have missing support here. This is a problem. And unfortunately, this is the story I hear over and over and over again. The Magento core platform is very stable. It's very performant. But unfortunately, it's with all this extra stuff that has been added onto it, it loses out, unfortunately. So here's the thing. Adobe is going to fix this problem and they're making great strides to do this. You might've heard of catalog service, um, might've heard of app builder. These are some tools that they are fairly rapidly building out to resolve this. The idea is the core stays pretty much the same, but we have this, our functionality over here hosted in app builder. App builder is basically this opinionated hosting environment that hosts these modifications to the functionality. Now, this is going to be extended on to then start working with headless. And headless is another conversation for another video. Basically, it's this veneer, this front end browser only application that then in will interact directly with App Builder. So 
this is coming. This is progressing. We at Swift Otter are actively investing in learning this and making good progress on it. We're pretty excited about it. But here's the thing. That's Adobe Commerce. Let's look at Big Commerce. Big Commerce today is like this. Very similar to what Adobe is working toward in App Builder, but it's already done in Big Commerce. You see, we have our core functionality, but then we have these API points that we have this new functionality hook into. We can also talk via the front end as well. Basically, this core stays off limits. It's non-touchable. It can be upgraded. In fact, I understand they often do daily deliveries. They release at a very regular pace. New features, security fixes, everything is automatically just happening. And thus, our new functionality can then hook into that, interact with it via the API. It's like talking over the wire as opposed to modifying the code itself. Thus, I would like to share with you the pros and the cons of both of these approaches. On the Adobe side, it is open source, including commerce as well. It's thus, anything can be changed. That is the beauty of it. And I would say for you merchants who are needing highly customized business, have highly customized business processes and are looking to leverage these capabilities, uh, Adobe is the right approach for you. Uh, perhaps it could be done on big commerce, but at some point you start tipping the lever into what you have to actually rebuild in order to gain some of this access. But there's many merchants out there. In fact, I would probably put an 85-15 uh, ratio on this, 85-15% ratio on this, such that there's really probably 15% of merchants who really need this level of customization. Everything else probably fits well into big commerce. So do you need this ability that everything can be changed? Yeah. Well, then Adobe is probably the right route for you. But if that is the case, uh, there are some challenges until this uh, this new app builders really gets traction and the whole uh, front end for it really makes it is is uh, is built out to where it needs to be. Um, thus, we're going to have expensive regular upgrades for PCI compliance. Of uh, unfortunately, installing too many modules regularly hurts uh, this performance aspects. We, again, we've seen this over and over and over again. Plus, there's just this additional cost to keep the lights on with Adobe. Now, on big commerce, though, it's a little bit different. It is open SaaS. And so I would say the biggest, perhaps what people would see as the disadvantage is this locked away core features. Now, the good news is with Adobe or with big commerce, because of their API coverage, all these little hooks that you can get access to all the information stored in big commerce, it's really not a a problem. It just means some extra development time. For example, if you need, and maybe the only requirement for heavy customization is a very unique order display. Well, in big commerce, that's just not really possible to change that. But all the API hooks are there. Thus, uh, your agency like Swift Otter can build out this interface such that it can be completely customized exactly to your needs. It'll be hosted in a slightly different place in the big commerce admin, but all that to say, it's fully there and available. But here is the all the benefits that come as a result of this approach. And again, what I find quite redeeming is Adobe is working in this direction too. Thus, it, it just feels like the right approach in literally every circumstance, except for the few that uh, really are best suited for this heavy level of customization. Native performance, you literally don't have to worry about performance. Uh, there's almost no money to keep the lights on. No, none of this maintenance budget. PCI compliance is mostly big commerce's responsibility. You don't have to worry about security upgrades at all. And, and here's the thing. So instead of spending however much a month toward keeping the lights on, bug fixes, security upgrades, all this stuff locked down for this upgrade budget, it's like changing your oil. You don't get a faster car as a result of that. Instead, you can take all that money and you can put it towards improving big commerce. So if this is actually a win-win, a double whammy, instead of having to be fixing these bugs which are affecting the conversion rate, frustrating customers, you kind of eliminate that side of the problem. Plus then you can take that cash and actually invest it into optimization. Look at this. My estimate for many merchants is that by moving just to big commerce on this basis alone, you will see a 5 to 10% increase in conversion rate. 
which for a merchant running $20 million of revenue, that could be a $1.5 million increase in sales right there. That is a win. And I hope you found this video beneficial.